The plot below is a list of Shu's figure created with the parametric equations x of t equals a cosine of bt and y of t equals c times sine dt. We want to find the possible positive values for a, b, c, and d. Before we do this though, we should be familiar with the basic cosine function graphed here in red and the basic sine function graphed here in black. Notice how the x values are controlled by the cosine function and the y values are controlled by the sine function. Again, referring back to our basic cosine and sine functions, notice how both have a maximum function value of positive one and a minimum function value of negative one, which means by analyzing the x values of our figure, we should be able to determine the value of a, where the absolute value of a would be the amplitude of our cosine function, and by analyzing the y coordinates of our figure, we should be able to determine the value of c, where the absolute value of c would be the amplitude of the sine function. So let's first focus on determining the value of a, where x of t equals a times cosine of bt. So we'll project this figure onto the x-axis to determine the maximum x value and the minimum function value, which will help us determine a. So notice how, so if we project this figure onto the x-axis, notice how the minimum x value is negative three and the maximum x value is positive three. And that means a, since we're using a positive value, would have to be three, meaning the amplitude of our cosine function would be three. So x of t must equal three times cosine of b times t. And now we'll analyze the y coordinates of our figure to determine the value of c. If we project this figure onto the y-axis, notice how the minimum y value would be negative four here, and the maximum y value would be positive four here, and therefore, again, if we're using a positive value for c, c would have to be positive four, meaning the amplitude of our sine function, which controls the y-coordinates, would have to be four. So we have y of t equals four times sine of d t. Now notice that b and t are going to affect the period of our cosine and sine function. For if we have y equals sine b theta, or y equals cosine b theta, the period would be equal to two pi divided by b, and the frequency would be the reciprocal of the period. So now what we'll do is trace our figure and determine how many cycles of the cosine function and how many cycles of the sine function it would to take. Sketch the figure exactly once. Before we do this though, let's determine the point on the figure when t equals zero. Notice when t is zero, x would be equal to three times cosine zero, which would be three, and y would be equal to four times sine zero, which would be zero. And therefore when t equals zero, the point would be three comma zero, which is here. And now as t increases, the orientation of the graph would be in this direction here. And to simplify things slightly, let's say we want to trace this entire figure from t equals zero to t equals two pi radians. This doesn't have to be true, but it will help us determine the value of b and d because b and d are not unique what the ratio is, which we'll talk about later. So now we'll trace the figure focusing on just the x values and how many cycles of the cosine function it takes to trace our figure. Before we do this, if we take a look at the basic cosine function, notice when the input is zero, we have a maximum function value, and then when the function value returns back to the maximum function value, we have one complete cycle of our cosine function. Since we have a maximum function value of positive three, when the x-coordinate returns to positive three, this will represent one complete cycle of our cosine function. Let's begin tracing. Again, we're waiting until we return back to positive three. Notice here we're at negative three, a minimum function value, which would be half a complete cycle, so we keep tracing. And notice how now we're finally back at positive three, and the figure is completely traced, and therefore it only takes one complete cycle of the cosine function over this interval for t to trace our figure. 
and therefore the period would be two pi divided by one, and therefore b, the coefficient of t, would be one. So now we know that x of t equals three times cosine of one times t, or just t. And now we'll trace the figure again, focusing on just the y values, and determine how many cycles of the sine function it takes to trace our figure. But again, before we do this, let's take a look at our basic sine function. Notice how when the input is zero, we're at the midline, or a function value of zero, we have to return to a function value of zero, not once, but twice, for one complete cycle of our sine function. So let's begin tracing. Notice how we have a y value of zero, and then we return back to a y value of zero here. We have to return to a function value of zero twice for one complete cycle, so we keep tracing. Here we are back to a y value of zero twice, so this represents one complete cycle of our sine function. And we keep tracing. We're back to zero once, and finally back to zero twice. So we have two complete cycles of our sine function, and therefore the period would have to be two pi divided by two, and therefore our coefficient d must equal two. So we have three times sine of two t. As I mentioned earlier, on this interval of t, these equations would trace our figure, but as long as the ratio of b and d stayed the same, meaning the period of the sine function is half the period of the cosine function, we would still trace the figure, it would just take a different interval for t to trace the figure once. So again, as long as d is twice the value of b, we would still create the same figure from the parametric equations. But I think in most cases, it's easier to use the basic period of the cosine and sine function for the interval of t to determine b and d. I hope you found this helpful.